All right, so now that we solved that, and let's go over the last section of this uh, extensive video. Uh, so vectors in physics. So one use of projections occurs in physics in calculating work. So in my earlier video, uh, we defined the work done by constant force F in moving an object through a distance D as uh, work equals to force times distance. But this applies only when the force is directed along the line of motion. Suppose, however, that the constant force is a vector, uh, we'll call this F, uh, equals to PR, uh, so it pointing in some other direction as in the figure below. And I'll draw this in a bit. So if, yeah, I'll draw this right here. So let's say you had, yeah, so if the force uh, moves object from P to Q, then the displacement vector is D equals to PQ. So in other words, uh, let's say you had a, uh, here's a displacement, so it moves along this, di this direction from P to Q, but the force is at some angle across there. This is the vector F, and this right here is a displacement vector D. And then this right here is put a dashed line, this perpendicular, and this is gonna be our S, this is gonna be our R, and then we're gonna have our other angle. Well, this can be our angle like that. So this is, a, this is the PR, so this is the force F, the displacement from P to Q, but the, yeah, this, is, this force is at a different angle. Yeah, so our net uh, force in the direction along the displacement is gonna be this red one. Again, it's a projection of F onto this right here. All right, going further. So now uh, the work done by this force is defined to be the product of the component, so this right here, of the force along, uh, along D and the distance moved. So in other words, work is, e is defined as uh, equaling right here, so this is gonna be the component onto this, this, this projection onto here, or the component uh, of it, so in other words, the, the magnitude of that uh, force vector has by cosine to get the cosine direction of it. Uh, in other words, uh, along Q, along this PQ, and then multiply the distance traveled, like that. All right, yeah, so that is the work. All right, so that is the work, but notice here, uh, if you just move this uh, distance D over in the front, and, uh, but then from definition two of the dot product we have, so we have W, is equal to, let's move this over here, and that just becomes um, the force magnitude times by the distance traveled, and then times by cosine theta. In other words, this is the dot product of force times the displacement vector, or, this, or the distance vector there. Yeah, so uh, thus the work done by constant force uh, F, uh, vector F, is the dot product of the force vector uh, yeah, dot uh, displacement vector where D is a displacement vector, which is <laughs> quite fascinating. So yes, we define a dot product and then we somehow manage to link it all to physics and how work is defined. So you can just use a dot product. Interesting, so continuing further, so let's take a look at example seven. So a wagon is pulled a distance of 100 meters along a horizontal path by a constant force of 70 newtons. So we're assuming it's being pulled like that, 70 newtons like that. Uh, the handle of the wagon is held at an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal, and it allows to find the work done by the force. And let's take a look at the solution. All right, so if F and D are the force and displacement vectors as pictured in the figure below, then the work done is, and let's just draw this, well, this is a straightforward one, it goes horizontal, so you have D, like that, you have the force here, and the angle's 35 degrees. Let's draw it like that. 35 degrees, this projection onto here. This is a right angle. This is our force vector. And what we get is, I'll smooth this over to here on the left side. So we get work equals, well, just a dot product. Uh, F times D, but we're given the angles. We know angle. Uh, we know the magnitudes of both. This number right here, this goes 100 meters. And a constant force is 70 newtons. So we get, uh, this is going to be, I'll just put the, uh, the magnitude of the force. 
times by the distance traveled or the displacement, and then cosine of the angle. Uh, this is going to be uh, cosine theta or cosine 35, like that. Or better yet, put cosine theta. And then we'll put in all, all of our figures in. This equals to, or put it here, equals to 70 newtons times by 100 meters. Yeah, like that, 70 newtons on 100 meters. And I'm going to move this here to have some more space. And then times by cosine 35 degrees. And if you plug this into the calculator, you get about 5734 newton meters, uh, which equals to 5734 joules or J. Like that. So joules or newton meters. Yeah, so unit of energy is just a unit of work there. Very fascinating stuff. All right, uh, now that we have that, let's do a quick calculation check. So 70 uh, times 100 times cosine 35. And if you just plug this in, this gets into joules there, which is fascinating. So yes, I think, yeah, this uses degrees. So yes, that is correct there. All right, continuing further. So example, hey, this is the last part of, or last question in the in this video. So a force is given by a vector F equals to 3i plus 4j plus 5k. So this is the standard basis vectors and moves a particle from the point P, uh, which is 210 to the uh, point Q uh, uh, with, with the coordinates 462. And, and we're asked find the work done and, and yeah, so find the work done in moving this particle from there using this force. So we have the distance or displacement we can calculate, and we have the force, and we can just find the work done. All right, so the displacement vector is, well, we're given, a, we can solve the displacement vector. Let's just solve this one first. So, and then we can do the uh, dot product and solve it, but I want to graph it in a bit. So let's go to the displacement vector D. This equals two, well, distance, or the uh, vector from P to Q, or the displacement there, I'm going to write this as uh, equals to, well, it's going to be uh, the difference. So difference from P to Q, so Q, you're moving from P to Q, so the displacement is the distance between it. So four minus two, so subtract all the components. Four minus two, six minus one, and then two minus zero, like this. So this equals two, well, two, five, two, like that. That's the displacement vector. And uh, this displacement vector is, again, is the relative uh, distance from, uh, from P to Q. All right, so thus the work done is, and before I do that, I just wanna graph all of this in 3D just to illustrate what we're doing. And this is gonna be our Z component. This is gonna be our Y, and this is gonna be our X. Like that, this is gonna be our zero. Uh, origin and we are going with a let's get some uh, points here so we are going to be uh, the force is going to be in this direction 3i 4j 5k so 3i so 1 2 3 then 4j uh, it's going to be uh, 1 2 3 4 put it here and then 5 1 2 3 4 5 all the way up uh, across on top there. And uh, let's just draw this in, uh, in 3D here. This one projected is gonna be across here. Uh, this one's gonna be across here. And it's gonna look somewhere like this. So this is our force, F. And then our particles can be moved from, Q, from point P to one zero. So this is going to be 1, 2, oh yeah, it's 2, 1, and 0. So it starts from here, that's our point P. And it's going to go all the way into, well, let's see where Q is. It's 4, 6, 2. It's going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4. And then this is going to be, if this is 4 right here, 5, 6, and then 2. I'm going to go rise up twice. This is going to be somewhere across here. Uh, here, one, two, it's somewhere above here. So it's uh, a bit in 3D, it's gonna be somewhere like that. So that is the display, the distance here. 
Let's move it like that. It's just a bit hard to. So that is our queue. And this is thing is uh, pushing it there. And yeah, that's what we have. So this is a displacement vector. And uh, I believe we did. Yeah, we do here this force again. I assume it's just in, in the general direction like that. So you can just move it across here. And this is going to be just F. Just move it across there. So there's the force pushing in that uh, direction like that. And yeah, I just wanted to show that anyway. So now we could just solve our uh, product. I mean, our dot product. So we can do that right here. W equals to uh, the force vector times displacement vector. Which equals two. And this is going to be um, the force vector is 3i, 4j, and then 5k. In other words, in component form, 3, 4, 5, and then dotted with 2, 5, 2. 2, 5, 2. And this equals 2, well, 3 times 2. I'll, I'll just put it all together. 3 times 2 plus 4 times 5 plus uh, 5 times 2. This equals 2. 6 plus 20 plus 10. So it equals 36. All right, so that's 36. And it depends on the units. And uh, we're not giving in units here, but if I assume it's newtons and meters, we'll get joules. All right, all right, and here I'm just gonna draw this parallel. So yeah, so if the unit of length is meters and the magnitude of the force is measured in newtons, then the work done is 36 joules. Again, that's just the uh, basic physics units. 